Hi, how do you learn best? What study strategies do you prefer to use when you're trying to learn something? Stick around today and we're going to look at some strategies that you probably have never thought of before. Before we get started today, I'd like you to take just a few seconds and in the comments below, please list your favorite study strategy. I was a public school teacher for more than 20 years and for more than 10 of those years I worked as an adjunct professor at the university level as well. Each semester I would start with my students by taking a look at study strategies, helping them to get some tips for how they could make their learning time most effective throughout the rest of the course. I was lucky enough to come across some videos posted on YouTube by Dr. Chu at Samford University in Birmingham, Alabama. These videos became the cornerstone of the way that my students learned learning strategies and how we effectively put those strategies to use in my classroom. First of all, let's take a look at some of the things that Dr. Chu says in his very first video. Things that are not going to help you if you're trying to learn. Motivation to learn, he says. You can be highly motivated to learn, but if you don't use the right strategies, you're just going to be wasting your time. Also, the amount of time you put into studying is not necessarily an indicator of how well you're going to learn the material. You can put tons of time into studying, but if you're not using the correct strategies, you're just spinning your wheels. Also, he states, and you probably know this already, that memorizing isolated facts is probably not a way to get you to actually learn the material unless your teacher expects you to memorize isolated facts. If that's the case, then you should probably work on that as well. He also says that focus on learning styles alone is not going to get you the effectiveness in learning that you want to achieve in order to make your study time most successful. He states that most people, all people I guess, need to employ more than just one learning style and become learners in all different modes in order to learn effectively. I might get some hate mail on that, but go ahead and look at Dr. Chu's video and see what he says about it. Also, and this is not a surprise, we don't multitask very well. We can't study if we're checking our Facebook. We can't really learn anything if we're all wound up in what texts we need to return. So those multitasks we have to put aside and focus just on the business of learning. Now what does he say actually works? Well, Dr. Chu says that minimizing distractions, no surprise there, and maximizing your focus is very helpful when you're trying to learn. But how do you maximize your focus? Well, one way is to develop accurate metacognition. And metacognition is just becoming aware of what's going on in your head when you're trying to learn something. If you're reading something, if you're studying some concept or fact or topic, inside your head you should always be asking yourself, am I learning this? What do I need to do to learn it better? You might be asking yourself, what do I already know about this? What do I want to learn about it? Am I doing this too slow or too fast? Metacognition is what is happening in your head beyond those words on the page of the text or in the pages of your notes. Also, deep appropriate processing strategies, and this is the main thing we're going to take a look at in the rest of this video and the next three videos. All learning activities are not equal in terms of their effectiveness to aid in learning. There are shallow processing activities and there are deep processing activities and it's those deep activities that we want to spend our time talking about. Deep processing strategies are strategies that lead to meaning and comprehension. They are elaboration, distinctiveness, and personal connections considering background knowledge. We'll get into each of these in subsequent videos. Shallow processing activities uh, consist of things like memorizing isolated definitions, 
so-called reading things over and over again, but with no purpose, depending on what you already know or what you already think you know, reading something only once, memorizing facts, simply looking things over, doing and remembering are involved with shallow processing tasks. Now, deep processing tasks or strategies include things like making analogies, coding, comparing and contrasting, looking at similarities and differences, elaboration, analyzing metaphors, studying connections, using concept maps, looking at details, and truly analyzing something. These kinds of activities lead to learning. Using elaboration, distinctiveness, and personal connection, deep processing activities lead students to think about questions like how, why, if something, then something else, what if, or I wonder. Both students and teachers need to be aware of how harmful shallow strategies can be to learning and how helpful using deep processing strategies can be. Examples of shallow strategies are activities where students are simply asked to do something or define something, copy something. Activities where they're only encouraged to read something once or maybe only just look something over. Studying isolated facts is another shallow strategy. To really understand something, you need to know how all kinds of things work together. My personal pet peeve is the word search. I can't think of a single thing students can learn from doing a word search. It's just a big time waster and a shame too because there are so many other activities students could be during, doing from which they could actually be learning. Deep processing strategies ask students to compare and contrast and match information on something like a Venn diagram. Deep processing strategies ask students to solve problems, to generate questions, and then get the answers to those questions. Deep processing activities also may include making concept maps or writing about the background knowledge or similar experience a student has had with some new information. Analysis is an extremely deep processing activity which can be done in many different ways and analyzing includes taking all the parts of something apart and considering each of the different parts separately. In the next three videos, we'll be taking a deeper look at deep processing activities. I'm going to share with you lots of examples of student work from my classroom showing just how my students put these deep processing activities to use to aid in their learning. Please subscribe and so you don't miss any of these videos as they are put out on YouTube, please click on that little notification bell because we want you to never stop learning.